We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. done a podcast with hoops in yet so oh this will be we'll interesting that... how does it feel nice yeah <laughs> you know what it's nice it's keeping them in place right really... right i'm gonna it do it good. with the hoops yeah you like them i'm learning a lot <laughs> nails, nails acrylics you see it's gonna be really good educational um, afternoon it's mm-hmm. gonna be mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but we'll hop right in so yes. uh welcome to another episode of the freddie and Alyssa show uh i'm freddie and I'm Alyssa. And our amazing guest today is Camila Bonus. Hi, everybody. How Thanks for the introduction. You? Good. Yeah, What's absolutely. going on, girl? Well, before we get into any conversation, I just got to say, for anyone who doesn't know Camila, you're going to get to know her very well here, and you're going to see that she's amazing. <laughs> um, but just in the time that we've known each other, like, I, I just want to say this, like, like and you, you know, you know Camila too, like, your professionalism, your hard work, you're, you're so talented. And you always, um, you're one of those people that, like, I know what I'm going to get with Camila. Like, you're always mm-hmm. the same person. And, like, and that means, like, a lot. Like, going into work, you know you're going to be prepared. You know you're going to be doing awesome. And you always treat everyone with respect. You've been so good to me over thank the years. You, and I really appreciate you and your friendship. So thank you for Ooh. coming on. And uh, it just I means a lot. That. Okay, can I do a little note now? Okay, a little Freddie <laughs> note. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, I, I got to say, it's total totally mutual for me um you know from the minute that i met you it's been great energy and just amazing positivity and it's always been a rewarding experience to be on set with you i always learn something and it's never it doesn't feel forced or bad or uncomfortable it's something fun and i think that's the best part of of being able to work with people that you get along with you know that that even if it's a bad day or if you're having something weird going on, like you still get to do what you love and you make it fun, you know? So I appreciate you guys and, and thank you much so much for having me. And um, I'm so excited to yes. answer all your questions and for everybody to get to know a little bit of me. And, yeah. and if I could you. just add on to that, I have to say your energy is just wildly infectious. The second you walked in, I was like, yes, let's do this girl. Like thank she's just you. such an energy and I love her. You're such a powerhouse. And a strong, positive woman. So, thank you. Thanks for being a ray of sunshine. Well, from one strong woman to another, thank you. Hey. <laughs> nice. Well, what? What? Um, because we can get into your story. I'd love to hear like Camila's just story in general. Um, uh, yeah. Well, you want to start? Well, let's start. Yeah, there, huh? and I also I saw too. You're from Miami. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you started in commercials, print work, all that, and then you sent a audition tape to New York is that correct yes please tell me what that was because I need to know everything for sure so uh, I worked my whole life in Miami I it's you know we all come kind of like from small towns essentially right a lot of people here from LA that aren't you know the locals we all transition over here because this is where the business is but I come from Miami for me it's a small town even though it's kind of like a metropolitan city sure. but for me it is and um, I got to do, I think, the most that I could in Miami. I did 50 commercials, 70-plus wow. print uh, wow. stuff for Germany, Italy, France, um, Brazil, all over the world. And so I was really fortunate because I fit measurements. That's what it was about. Fitting measurements hmm. and fitting a look and fitting a certain height. And so it worked out for me. I was really lucky. And even as a kid, I would tell my mom, like, I'm so lucky, I'm so lucky, I'm so lucky. Oh. And um, my gradu- uh, week of graduation of high school, I was emceeing. I was working on a project in Spanish, um, playing a vampire. And it was the f- one of the first few projects that I was doing that weren't commercials, that was something like TV, but it was still Spanish because in Miami, sure. it's not where the industry's at. You know, right. we, we, you have to go to New York, you have to go to Hollywood if you want to really make it big. And so... Um, yeah, I was doing that and I got an audition. I had I had been getting auditions for self tapes and I got one for One Life to Live. I didn't know what One Life to Live was. I'd never heard of American soap operas. I only knew of Spanish ones. They yes. usually last wow. six months and they would play in my living room and I would 
walk by them and my grandma would be watching or my family members and that's all I knew. And so I auditioned, I put myself on tape within all this craziness of me I'm seeing my graduation and this other show and everything. And they call me back and they say, oh my gosh, you are going to screen test in New York for One Life to Live. I was 17. Wow. And I said, oh my gosh, okay. So because I was uh, a minor, they had my mom fly out with me over there and we did a screen test with 12 girls. It's a pretty big screen test. And then um, a week later, I go back to Miami. I'm still living my life. Everything's fine. Graduating from high school, I think, that week. And um, I get a call and they said, well, they need to screen test you again. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to fly you back out there. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So I go back out there and mind you, all my friends are like, what are you doing? Like, we're (laughs) supposed to be like having like spirit day. We're supposed to be having this like field day. And I'm over here like going off to New York doing all this stuff. And so I get out there and there's three girls now. And I'm one of the three. And uh, I knew it was serious. I just didn't know how serious because I was 17. Sure. And I didn't realize that when I signed this contract doing the screen test and they picked me, it meant that I didn't need to sign anything else. It was done. And that you actually. And then I got, got it and whatever. If that, you know, I didn't even know that that was the case. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Don't, not to interrupt you. I just want to make sure it's not in your face. <laughs> yeah, 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 there for sure. So, uh, so, so nothing. I naively went to the uh, second screen test and uh, got it. And when I got it, I was not excited. Because I found out at that moment that I had to move to New York. Sure. I guess I didn't put it together in my innocent mind that because I was flying to New York, it would be shooting in New York. Where did you think it would be shooting? I didn't know. You just and didn't I also didn't, think of it. I also maybe didn't realize that it was in a studio mm-hmm. the whole time. Um, sure. I had shot Dexter, which was on location previous to this. And I thought, okay, it was on location. It's going to be for a little while. Then I get to go to Miami and kind of like what I realized a set would be. But soap opera sets are not like that. And uh, they said that my contract was for three years, living in New York, (laughs) fresh out of high school. And I was like, no, (laughs) no, I own nothing. You can sue me right now. I am not going to New York. Oh my so you, God! But, so yeah. I said no. I know. I know. It, it, all my things have been like this. All my my bookings have been like this. I said no. It was a huge problem. My manager was like, "Well, girl, you signed the papers, <laughs> honey. Like, no, like you're gonna get sued then. Like, are they gonna start figuring this out? Like, going into their legal team and starting this situation? And I'm like, I don't care. I don't own anything. I don't have anything. Like, I whatever. So. I'm crying for a week. My mom's mad at me. My agent's mad at me. Casting director's mad at me. Everybody's mad at me. And <laughs> I come to my senses, and my mom tells me, "He's like, Camila, we're all, we're gonna move with you. Like me and Gabby, my sister, we go everywhere together. Mm-hmm. together. We're gonna move together. We're gonna make this work. We're gonna be fine. They're gonna put us in a hotel for the first couple months. We're gonna find rent." And I was still pretty upset. I did not. I didn't. I wasn't prepared to just kind of like leave Miami like that. I actually had started college in Miami. Wow. I started a program called Jumpstart and that starts college like early. Like, you know, the month that you, yeah. like the week that you graduate high school, yeah. let's just say. And I wasn't prepared. I, I I got into a really cool college called New World School of the Arts. I know about New World. Yeah, so. I had a lot of friends who went there. Yeah, so I, you know, and I had want, I wanted to get into the high school and I didn't get in. And I ended up auditioning for the college, and I got in for the college, and cool. I just wasn't prepared for me to move to New York for three years, yeah. you know? Champagne problems. <laughs> I know, I know. My agent was like, you're going to be shopping at Barney's. I don't care. I want, I want to go to Barney's. I want to stay in so Miami. Crazy. I need Cuban food. So then your family oh, moved with you. Did you eventually get settled and enjoy yes. it, or do you not like New York? I eventually got settled. I s- always hated New York. Really? Yes. I always loved oh. when I was working. Okay. For me, being in the studio was great. Um, it was just an amazing learning experience. I got to meet giants in this industry. I got to meet Cassie De Pavia, De Paiva. Yeah. I got to meet A. Martinez, which he played my father on this show as well. Oh, okay. Yes, I got to meet David Fumero Camar de los Reyes. I got to meet so many people in the soap world and also people that now are in primetime shows. Um, so it's, it's just been, it was an amazing experience to work with all these people. 
Ron, our writer, was actually a writer on One Life to Live when I was on there. Wow. So it's really cool to to be around these experiences. I booked a pilot while I was over there because the um, casting director was, uh, I guess they had told her, ABC like can't find like this one particular Latina character that they need. Do you know anybody? Hmm. And so I said to tape in, I shot it in Boston. It was super cool. Met one of my closest friends there. Wow. But I was really unhappy because in a year that I was there, I went to Miami eight times. Wow. <laughs> You have any Miami flavor? Yeah, any moment that I could, I, sorry, I would go home because wow. I wasn't used to the weather. I wasn't used to um, sure. the commute, the way that people live in New York. Um, for me, everything is very uncomfortable there. You have to f- very, very, it's a hard fight. My sister's living there right now. And oh, she wow. tells me, Camila, to go get scissors, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like three hours of my day or two hours of my day. I can't just go downstairs and get scissors somewhere or get in my car and get scissors, you know? It's a thing. Yeah. So uh, it was hard to live there, but having my sister and my mom, of course, um, helped. I will tell yeah. you, it was the first time in my life I ever experienced some sort of depression, hmm. some sort of like, I was always, I've always been very happy, very positive, very sunny you know I'd call myself very bright you know and as far as personality and I felt really dimmed and like Mm -hmm. my light was not really shining very strong and I felt sad all the time and and that was more like a homesick thing or what what do you think weather the weather was really bad for me I you you grew up in Miami so you never oh so that was the first time experiencing snow because I grew up in South Florida too and I've never lived in the cold and I don't know if I could yeah when it was like you know when I saw that it would snow for you know days and days on end and there would be snow piling up on the buildings or the walls and you know it wasn't easy for us to go somewhere or we had to stay in for a couple days because it just wasn't comfortable I was not in a happy apartment that place was not a happy place for me so I didn't want to be in there and so yeah it wasn't it was just not a good thing and I associated the cold with all these just like my body hurt and I had to walk in the snow and snowing in my face (laughs) and like take the bus to the train in the snow and it was it was hard work for Miami girl yeah yeah and exactly and I'm that I grew up on the beach yeah you know, I would, I take a bathing suit to school, you know, cause after school we'd just yeah. go to the beach yep. and, uh, I like the comfort of my car. I can play the music how I'd like it. I'd have the sure. AC how I'd like it. I feel safe. <laughs> Is that weird? No. I feel safe in my car. You know, I would feel very exposed in New York, very exposed with, you, you know, being around people. You, but some people gain in de- independence in New mm. York. You well, know, sure, s- some sure. people are like, we can't stand, you know, not being able to walk downstairs and being able to get a train. Oh my God, like I, I need to walk everywhere. Yeah. So it's just different for each personality. Absolutely. And, and also where you grow up, where you establish roots and what you're comfortable with, mm-hmm. you know? What if you were to go back and visit? Like, is it some like New York a place that you're like, hey, I love it, like to go visit, or are you just like, New York you're like absolutely soon. not? I'm I have not a rule gonna... for New York. I have a rule for New York and Vegas. Okay, please tell us. And those two places are three day maximum. Yes, yes, I agree Vegas, with that. I agree. Okay, because for me, um, New York, I love to eat there. Mm-hmm. I love to see shows there. Yes. And I love to experience some touristy things, mm-hmm. some extravagant things like Carlos Bakery. Get some cannolis at Carlos Bakery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that yeah. that you don't find anywhere else because it's New York City. Or some pizza. Yeah, or you or go to Soho for a, a couple hours yeah. or something like that and experience that kind of life. But like I said, all those things I can do in three days. <laughs> and after I'm done with that, I really I'm good. You're ready I'm to go. good. It's a lot of energy. It 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 sure. it doesn't. Some people it feeds their energy. Some people it takes their energy. It takes my energy. Sure. So it's um it just depends on your personality. I think. Whether or not, yeah. At least your commute back and forth was uh, two like hours. Two hours. Yeah. Because now, like you know, it's like going to Miami. That's a six-hour flight. Yes. Well, my sister lives in New York now. She ah. um she went out there for pilot season and decided to stay for a year. Okay. So now I am having the situation where it's like, okay, I gotta go visit my sister. But it's like, oh, the six hour flight is so, mm. you know, and then she's coming here and she's feeling the pain too. So it's, 
That's well, we just crazy. got back from Jersey what, oh. last Tuesday, so it's a long flight. Yeah. And we got um, kind of stormed in for a little bit and had a three hour delay. We were like on the plane. Chilling on the tarmac. So we were on the airplane hours. for like nine hours Good straight, times. like in our seat. <laughs> but even just like getting crazy. out of any airports in that area. Yeah. Uh, it's busy. Yeah. It's, it's an hour too, to anywhere you're going. Mm-hmm. It's expensive to anywhere you're going, and it's traffic. So yeah, it's tough. I have this hate love with traveling. Like I love it because it's like, it, it opens like the, the fact that we've been to some of the same places or you talk to people, you have experience to say, oh my yeah, when I'm in LA or Miami, you know, it's like really cool to, to be traveled, but it also takes a lot out of you. Yeah. And uh, some t- some vacations awesome. you need a vacation from your vacation. Yeah. 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 We but we don't schedule things on vacations. Like mm-hmm. I'm the type that. Like, I don't want to do anything. Like, if I want to, like, watch TV all day or go lay on the beach or, like... That's your vacation. I can't have, like, I am going to go do this at one, this at four, dinner here. Like, (laughs) if I'm not hungry at seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, like, I'm just going to, like, do, you know, see where the thing takes us. So, um, but no, that's super cool. So so you you left at, um, so you what, you left at 20 and went right to L.A.? Well, then, so we had a contract for three years, but this was 2008, the start of like oh, the, the not only the strike but the start of basically this huge economic breakdown of our entire country mm-hmm. and um i was part of a group of about 10 people that were fired on the same day and included oh. a martinez included people that had been there for 10 plus years wow. and um i was i'll tell you this funny story I was in the room with Frank Valentini, the now executive producer of uh, General Hospital. Has been for a long time. Um, And he's the one that gave me my job. He's the one that fired me. And he tells me, Camila, he was actually really disappointed. Camila, you know, I really don't want to do this. And and he told me that he had to let other people go. And uh, he told me that my my dad would be going as well. And he told me this other lady that was in my storyline would be going as well. And he fired me. And I started crying and laughing at the same time. Oh, God. Oh, my God. And, yeah. and he was, like, so taken aback. And was like, what is going on? And I said, I am so miserable here. Not here, but in New York. I hate it. Thank you so much. Stop like, I was it. so, I was weeping because I was disappointed. Sure. But I was just like, you saved me right so now. So how long into your contract was that? A year. A year oh, wow. and two months. Wow. Oh, so you, okay. Yeah. So, and then I think we finished, like there was another like two weeks after that, two or three weeks after that. But it was insane. Wow. It was insane. I was like, I was so happy to be given the key to freedom. Yeah. You get to get out of this place that you hate so much. Mm-hmm. And at that point, my mom and I, my sister, we were thinking, okay, what do we do? Do we go back to Miami? Do we go to LA? And we knew that if we went back to Miami, we would stay there for a while because it's like when you get home and then it's like you don't know what you're doing yeah. next and you're trying to figure it out and that could turn into a year or two or who knows how long. Five. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we decided to come to LA. Wow. Yeah, we decided to come to LA. And um, after coming to LA, I had a string of small things. I did um, two different shows on two different uh, Disney shows, Disney XD shows. I'm with the band and... Zeke and Zeke and Luther, Luther? Zeke and yeah, Luther, yeah. those two. There we go. So do I did. Know, do you know Nate Hartley? No. By chance. No. He, he was on, on that. during that yeah. time. No. Um. So you had those. Two, so you had a couple of yep. things there. And I did then... a couple things there, and that's six months into me being here. That's when I get an audition for Days of Our Lives. <laughs> wow. And I said to my manager, I was like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just left New York. I just left a soap opera. I don't want to do this. I'm clearly here in LA. This is my, why would I get myself into a contract where I'm here to, to find these opportunities? Right. And this is what they said to me. Oh, you going to the audition doesn't mean you're going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, with our track record. <laughs> and I'm like, like, yeah, I'm going to book it. Well, what's funny <laughs> is I didn't book it. Huh. Yeah, I um, I went in for the role, met Marnie, fell in love with her and her eyes and her energy. And um, I went in for it. I knew that I was not one of the first people contending for it because of this. The the girls were uh, going in for it, and they were about 10 girls, were about five years younger than me. A big group of them, like eight of them. And then two of us were about the same age, five years older. 
And so I was like, okay, we're the older selection in case they want to go that way. But I think these eight are what they're aiming for, like a younger mm-hmm. Gabby, right? They ended up picking a 15-year-old girl. At this point, I'm 19. Mm-hmm. Got it. So yeah, a little bit less. So, um, but she looks really young. And um, they had another will at that time as well. Huh. And so they both play uh, for about two months or something like that. And I get a phone call. They, they recast Will. And I get a call, phone call from Marnie. And she says, come here and listen to me. We're going to recast this character. And she's going to be doing a lot of shit. Oh. <laughs> you <laughs> no, did? She's going to be doing a lot of stuff. Okay? Yeah. And it's going to be heavy stuff. And um, we need to age the character a little bit. Because we just think that it's mm. going to be a little bit too heavy for that age range. I said, oh, how long is the, year, um, the contract for? Four years. Oh, Marnie. I didn't ask my mom. I didn't ask my manager. I said right there and then, I appreciate you so much. Thank you very much, but I'm going to have to decline. Oh, my God. <laughs> Marnie starts cursing at me. She's like, what the? She's like, no, 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 hold on a second. Like, you don't understand. Like, you don't even have to audition. Like, we're just going in and, like, we're having you come in. And I'm I appreciate you, but I don't want to be locked in for four years. Problem is, at that same time, I had been auditioning for a movie I wanted so badly. It was a girl that was blind, okay? Mm -hmm. The character. And I spent two weeks preparing for this role, blinding myself for hours and hours of the days, preparing for this role. Mm -hmm. I was so invested in this role. I was so into what I was doing that I was like, no, 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 you can't take it away from me. Like, this is happening. Like, I know this is happening. And so I said, no. Two weeks pass by. I don't get the movie. Another girl gets it. She calls me back. I don't know how. I don't know when, why she calls me back. Because no casting director in Hollywood, if you say no, calls you back. And, uh, and she says, listen, what about two years? Hmm. And at that moment, I was like, okay, don't be stupid, girl. (laughs) Okay, don't be stupid. All right? You know, this is a sign. And these, this is definitely, this is probably something that you need to do. And, um, and I said, yes. (laughs) Yeah. And now, uh, in October, I think, is going to be my eighth year. (laughs) Wow. 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 But what a a great steady job to have. Honestly, it really is a blessing. And you guys have done so well. I know you guys have worked together a ton. Yeah. A lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. To do. Yeah. 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 That's the thing about working on a show for so long, pumping out so many episodes that we get to do a lot of different storylines. Like it's always something new. It's such a gift. Time to to do all that. Ready? I mean, think about it. We get to experience these situations at a really high grade because we are still working with very, very extreme professionals in this industry that have mm-hmm. been working on this for many, many years. I'm talking about cast and crew. And and, and, and when we get to do these situations with, let's just say, Terry, our stunt um, coordinator or other actors that come in and are stunt you know, people, I learned so much. Mm-hmm. I can take all of these tools and all of these gifts that I am g- being given um, at such an, a great, big, um, alarming rate and use them if I ever need them in other projects, which I already have. Sure. You know, and it's so wonderful to get to another set and say, no, I can do that because I've already done it. Yep. You know On that? a professional set, in a major network set, you know, studio. Yeah. And, 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 and it, was, it was exactly what you need and I know how to do it. Exactly. And, and, you've, and you've been, a, so 17, so you've been... Um, You've been a full-time actor. Like, did you ever have a survival job? Or have you been fortunate enough to be a like, full-time actress, essentially? Like, did you ever have a, a gig out here when you were auditioning for those couple years? Or I have been very blessed. I have been very blessed. But I will say that I'm also a hard worker. And you know mm-hmm. this. Yeah. I When we when I first started on the show, um, I didn't know that we were going to have waves. You know how our show works. Yeah. Um, we have waves where our character will have this major storyline and be very featured and then they need to feature another storyline a little bit more, which makes sense. You know, we have a 30 plus cast and, Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that. So in the first year that I was on Days of Our Lives, I got a job at the mall at BB because we needed to make money money for the rent because... 
I was doing maybe one episode a month at that point or something like that. And yeah, they were giving me a guarantee, but it was like a one episode guarantee or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so it wasn't enough. And I'm the kind of person that I'll, I'll do anything. Yeah. I, I will do anything I need to do because I'm a hard worker, you know? So for me, I've never, I have been very blessed to never have had to wait a table or, you know, have a, a regular job like that. But, um, but I have a little bit, I have a little bit of experience. I don't have an extensive resume, but you know. But that's great. Thanks. I mean, that's really awesome. I've been very lucky. Like, I try, I try to say. You're a hard worker, girl. What what do you think that, that, that hard work, um, because I think there's a lot of people who have dreams that want to do many different things, not just acting, but anything. Like, like, what is it? Like, do you think that's something you were born with or is it something you developed and critique? Like, where's that burning desire come from? that makes you work so hard and like want to be successful in doing what you love? Like, do you have to like wake up in the morning and tell yourself like, I need to work hard today? Or like, w- like what's your thought process through the day of like creating all this success, not even getting into real estate. There's a lot of, I mean, you're doing like everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm just like curious, like, you know, what is that intern- in- in- that burning desire? Like, where's that That's a great from? question. Um, I, I guess it's a few things. Um, I, I am a firstborn. I am an older sister, but I'm also a bizarre older sister. My sister growing up, she would tell people, people would ask us, who's older? And she would say, oh, listen, hold on. She's older in age, but I'm older, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and so, because that's what it was. I was just very irresponsible and free spirit and an, an artist, but still, I was still an older sister when it came down to it, if there was a moment of Sure. We need to get things done. Camila's going to get it done. I think it came and comes from... I've always been confident in myself. And I've always felt different. And I've always felt like I have a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. And I need to do something with this energy. Because if not, sometimes it's overwhelming. Sometimes I can feel it shooting. And I'm not lying to you. Sometimes I feel it shooting out of my fingertips. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and it's weird because I don't wear watches because I'm, I stop watches, new batteries, um, oh whatever the situation is, I'll stop watches because of just my, my energy. energy, my, oh. what I radiate, um, my pulse. Felt it when you came in, girl. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you. Mama. You're welcome. Thank you. So I think it comes from something that I may not even understand fully. Totally. Um, some people may call it ADHD. Uh, I call it genius. I call it love. I call it wonderfulness. I call it whatever it is to you and and uh, specialness. You know, my, my whole life I was, t- I couldn't sit down on a chair in school. Mm-hmm. I would run around the class and stand up and I would get in trouble for that. I would have good grades, but I would get in trouble for yeah. just not being able to sit down and conform to what they told us that we had to do. You know, and so for me, my mom's always told me that it's okay to be different and it's okay to not necessarily do what everybody else is doing. So I have, I've always had this go charge attitude, never looked back. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's just what I've known my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like I, if there's a situation, I like to be the leader. I like to go and take control. I like to- You're a Leo too, right? It's funny because I'm on a cusp. Really? Yes. I yes. Thought, did I read July twenty second? Yeah. So yeah. It's the cusp. So I'm I'm a Cancer. Really? I, well, that one is the last day of Cancer. So I'm technically a oh. Cancer. Well, he's a cusp too of what is it, Pisces and in Aries. On yeah. the last day of Pisces, I think. Yeah, I, but I'm very I'm very much stereotypically what both my signs are. Okay. I like to be at home. I like to make food at home. I like to do all this Cancerian internal yeah. thing, and I like to be alone. But the minute I need to be that lion, yeah, I am there. You know what I'm saying? And I She's do not it. Lying. She's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's I'm a, a Leo balance. too, so I feel you, girl. Yeah. And it's a good balance. Yeah. But okay, so question. Talking yeah. on energy, have you ever heard of something called the green zone? No. So basically, there are three different zones. There's green where you're empowered, you're positive, you're happy, you believe in yourself, you are appreciative and grateful. Yellow zone is more you're content, 
you're bored, sometimes you're optimistic, sometimes pessimistic, and then the red zone is obviously powerless, angry at the world, you know, whatever it is. And basically, I live my whole life always trying to be in the green zone because great, why not? And it's once I learned about this, I really, um, you know, just my mindset, who was around me, the music, the podcast, I wanted it to be in the green zone to keep me there. And I feel a lot of successful people are in that mindset. So with you and your energy, do you feel that there are certain people in your life or situations or environments that you specifically choose to kind kind of stay in that green zone? Or oh yeah, what's your main reason for that? And first, I'm definitely gonna look this up. You should. And Hicks, that's awesome. I think that's wonderful. And I'm gonna look look that up and, and totally learn about that because it sounds amazing. It's but awesome. I for sure actively actively work on staying in the green zone Good girl. in my own way Love you know that. what i'm saying without even knowing that that was a thing because everywhere i mean i'm talking about nowadays on social media on the corner of your street you know anywhere you're looking unfortunately it's pretty sad out there mm-hmm. and um and it's it's pretty easy to get down mm-hmm. and my mom has been a huge advocate for me to understand that nothing should be able to get me down. Mm-hmm. That you are so important, that your heart is so important, that your happiness is so important, that your peace is so important, you know? Mm-hmm. And that if something is being volatile, is taking away, is draining your energy, is not make, keeping you at peace, right. you need to step away at that moment. Even if it's something that you care about. Yep. And so um, every day, I think in our, in our work, we deal with difficulties. Mm-hmm. Because it happens everywhere. You, you, that happens in every workplace. It happens in our world. It happens the minute we get in our car. We deal with difficulties, with obstacles, with yeah. whatever the situation is. And it's just how you go about it. How you jump into the green zone, staying in there. And, and, and I think it's... It's important for me to do things, like you said, to empower myself. Like, I'm silly. I'm super silly, and I like to be silly because Mm -hmm. it keeps me happy. I show up to work in a unicorn one day sometimes. (laughs) I like it. You know why? (laughs) Because maybe that day I was having a bad day, a bad morning. Life isn't that serious. And life is not... There are people that that are not waking up in this that morning. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm so blessed and so lucky, too, and, and... why not? Yeah. So if it makes me happy and if it cheers me up, I'll do it. And so those are little things. I will, if I'm having maybe a, more, a blue morning, I'll listen to, to, to musicals. Yeah. I'm a big 100%. musical um, person and I think they're very uplifting. Yeah. Me too, girl. And, pow- well. and powering and, yeah. and, 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 I, and I sing it and yell it and I'm in my car. And it's like a meditation session yeah. after, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Or I meditate. Yes. You know, I've been um, very lucky to have been introduced to Transcendental Meditation. Yep. And um, and I got my um, mantra about three years ago. And it's been amazing for me. It's been amazing for me to work with, with TM and, and their um, organization. So, so for me, I, I find a lot of dancing, working out, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is. There are so many ways to keep yourself centered in peace I think you yeah. know and it's of course it's gonna be hard of course look at this we're dealing with situations where you wake up a day where you realize 120 people died and those are just 120 people you heard about yeah on the news yeah you know what I mean and 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 and, and worse people dying in murders and in, in violent yeah, situations and just... you know it, it's a lot of things that are pulling us mm-hmm. in a negative spectrum. Yeah. So we have to, and it, it's not about also like, you know, being oblivious to all these bad things and being like, no, 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 no. I have to live my life good because I have to be happy and no, no, no. No, it's also understanding that these things are occurring. These things are, you have, I try to do as much as that I can. And obviously like we all have as much power as we right. each do. So, so it's just, 
doing the things that keep you happy. I think yes. And it's I, key. I think living <laughs> on purpose and intentionally putting a good environment around you. Because we don't always wake up, oh, happy, perfect, oh my gosh. Of course not. That's not life. Logical. Right. But I'm sure, and I don't know if this is something that you guys have seen, but imagine you know, maybe you're auditioning, 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 and you're not getting it, you're not getting it. And of course it's easy to go, oh, why I'm frustrated, like why not me? But if you stay in that red zone, that next audition you go to, you're not gonna book it because you're not there. And so for anyone in life listening, whatever your goals are, whatever it might be, you have to intentionally do things and put people in your life and just be in the right mindset and headspace or else it's gonna be a long ways to go up that hill, you know? It's gonna be a hard battle. One thing I think is really hard um, that I've seen a lot of people battle is confidence. Mm-hmm. And, and how? I... Benji, <laughs> Benji, we can hear you snore. He did that the other day. <laughs> Sorry, not to call so you out, Benji, but um, but yeah, with, with what you're saying about confidence, didn't interrupt, uh, interrupt you there. Yeah, confidence is one of one of the hardest things yeah. for people to. Achieve. Let's just call it a chief. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think, obviously, it comes from this horrific way that society has mm-hmm. kind of been telling us we have to be. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to wear these things and do these things to our faces and our bodies and, uh, you know, go to these places and, and meet these people and do these things. And yep. that's what's supposed to be. And if you're not doing it, then you're not right. So I get it. There's there's an upbringing of because these kids can't achieve that growing up, their whole grow upbringing, they yeah. feel like they're not right. Yeah. They are not what society tells them they're supposed to be. Right. So when they make it to be these adults, all they want to do is turn into this thing that society says we have to do. Yeah. And it's scary. It's so scary. It's so scary because I don't want to turn into what society is telling me because that's not for everybody. Yeah. And, 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 and who's to say that's right and you know wrong or whatever the situation is. But confidence is such a hard thing to teach and hard thing to achieve. But it would be so amazing if everybody just believed in their power and mm-hmm. in their specialness and in their difference, you yeah. know? That, well, it seems like for you too, um, you know, just the support from your family <sighs> is what has really, yeah. um, you know, contributed to the amount of confidence that you have. Um, and then, and, and just, I, I love these kind of questions too, though, is with all this confidence and this power and this desire and, the, and, and everything that you do to make yourself happy, um, you know, do you have any like fears? Do you ever like check in and say, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of this or, you know, like, do you have something that, that you work on, like, on a daily, like, I'm afraid of this, but I need to get over that? And do you ever think you can get to a point where you can minimize the fear to, like, being super, super quiet? Where you're like, ah, you're, I know you're there, fear, but, like, I don't, I don't give a shit about you. Like, just relax. I'm going to go crush it, you know? Of course I have fears. Everybody has fears. And I'm a worry word. That's my cancerian side. Hmm. I am, I worry about everybody. I pray for everybody. I, and it's something that I don't necessarily want because it's, it's a little par- a paranoid. Sure. It's a bit paranoid. Yeah. yeah. Um, it has been passed down from my mother, hmm. which she has extreme paranoia over me and my sister. We both are on her Find My iPhone um, so she can see where we're at at any moment. And, I'm okay with that, you know, because I know that it makes her feel okay. I kn- that's not normal. I'm feeding her what fear. What is normal, though? I, I'm, fe- I'm feeding her fear. Yeah. I, a, a therapist will tell you, Camila, you might be hurting her a little bit. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, if I don't, she's crushed. I'm her drug. I know I'm her drug. And she needs me. And I need her. So everybody has fears. Everybody has situations. And I, I have a lot of anxiety. Those, that's a big always been a big thing in my life i wouldn't say a fear but it's definitely something that impedes a lot of things in my life sure i think a lot of people and and here, here's <laughs> one here's one thing though and, and I, I i hate that i might mess this up but i believe it was michael j fox um 
who said something about worrying that when you worry, you're actually imagining a terrible situation happening and you're experiencing that anxiety and fear. And if it actually happens, you've now experienced it twice. It's very traumatic. Don't worry because if it, God forbid, whatever it is does happen, you're going to have to go through it. Why make it up in your head and go through it twice or multiple mm-hmm. times if you worry about it for six days? And um, I think it was Will Smith who said that. Mm, Jumping out of the airplane video. No, I mean, that was something different. But like... Um, but it's but so that was true. The, yeah, that was the whole that was the whole thing. Is just like, and it really stuck with me. It was one of those moments that I go, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm gonna do it, and mm-hmm. it most of the time works out. You know. So it's, this is this is awesome that that you can do that. But for me, like you said, like what is something that it, you have to actively? I on. have to actively turn that voice off. Mm-hmm. Because and I do too, though. It's the same thing. As much as I got well, that, artists. it just helps me. Ter- helps me, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, are, we are extra imaginative beings, I would say. Mm-hmm. People that are aware and open to more things as artists. We are creators, extra creators, extra imagination, extra vivid. So for me, it's so easy for me to get lost in a horrific situation in my mind. Yeah. On the way over here. I was driving on the freeway and all I kept thinking about were different plane crashes. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I didn't want to think about that. Right. It's an anxiety that I have. It's something that it's a voice, like you said, that's in the back of your mind telling you, hey, think about Hey, think about me. Hey, listen to me. Hey, focus only on me. But I have to stay busy. I have to make sure that I put myself in front of that voice, keep my happy things in front of that voice, make myself, remove myself from that voice, yeah. and keep it to that. It's going to be there, like you said. It's always going to be there. Mm-hmm. Dude, when you've received bad news, any person that's received bad news, The biggest fear in their life is receiving bad news again. Sure. So there, you know what I'm saying? There are people, everybody's going to be living with constant fears of many, many things in this world. It's going to keep happening. And the older we get, the more issues we're going to be dealing with and people we're going to be losing. And And I I think it's so, I'm glad that you, that you share this. And that's the reason I ask too, is because there's, you know, especially with with our podcast, is that we want to be able to you know leave people with their with their mind open and and have a, a positive outlet to listen or watch whatever um, platform they're looking at. But also seeing that if, if you see someone as successful as you, that it's not just all the highlight reel as all these social media platforms are, but it's it's showing people that look, you, you maybe not where you want to be right now, but here's someone who you look up to like Camila and like she has these anxieties she has these fears like I, some of the greatest people in the world that we probably think they're so perfect it's like they go through all this stuff everyone too like has everyone issues. has their same um and that's just struggles. one you know everybody's got multiple struggles and you see people like I'll give you a great example Robin Williams mm-hmm. you know I, I I don't understand why more why more celebrities and artists don't support um suicide prevention because it's such an important and prevalent thing that happens in our in our in our very small world mm-hmm. um and, and 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 mental illness is one of the biggest issues and fears and worries that occur in people's lives that aren't being necessarily addressed so you know it, everybody's got things and some people especially on social media nowadays you can oh. you can't tell because they're out there posting this other life their best life exactly so you know for me it's it's important i think one thing i've taken a lot from marcy milner is um she really takes the time to like get to know somebody and then like engage with that person and look at them in the eyes and say i can i'm i am connecting with you right now and i am i know that you are another person in this world with me and it's not fake and i'm here with you and i'm listening to you and i'm Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and it's really wonderful to live life in that way because yeah you don't know what other people are going through you don't know you know and you yourself so my favorite thing lately is um just be nice and ask questions that's awesome isn't it just the easiest way to get along to really let the ego down the wall the insecurities and just be nice. Like there's so many situations that we'll we'll be in that I'm thinking, I just 
sat at a coffee or met someone at a party and talked for 15 minutes and if they had to do a quiz on anything in my life they'd ask me nothing they were polite but it's just so interesting to me that like people really genuinely care if you are nice to them and you ask questions with not just trying to be nice right but actually learn something like that's why I'm eating this whole podcast thing. I'm like, let me like mm-hmm. learn stuff from Camille. I want to listen to what you're saying to gain yeah. more knowledge it's cool. and different perspectives. So when I meet people, I care. Like you have two kids. Well, what's that like? Like yeah. genuinely, like what's that like? And the more people you ask, I've talked to 25 parents and they all say the same thing. You're like, oh, you have a better understanding of what it's like to have exactly. kids even though you don't. So you learn you from learn. their experience. Yeah. Learning. That's, I'm, you know, it's just like, I don't know. Really cool. Well, I'd it also, is. I'd love to chat relationships a minute because, you know, Freddie and I, we've been together quite a while. You and Marlon have been together six years? Uh, six years in, Jan- in January. Six years. Was, yeah. And so just... We're approaching seven. Crazy. Oh my God. When? Uh, we never had like an official, official. like date date. Okay. It was just roughly like July-ish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So she gets a gift every day in July for Aww. anniversary. That's really yeah, cute. Right. That's, 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 yeah. I made that up to sound sweet. <laughs> but, um, You're going to have to do it this year. Yeah, I know. Like, oh. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but, you know, with relationships, even especially in Hollywood, I feel it's very rare, like a lot of friends I met, just keeping a relationship, it's really difficult. And then you look at, you know, really big mega stars. Like, my heart was crushed when Channing Tatum and Jenna divorced when Chris Pratt on a Ferris. I was like, if you guys can't stay together... Then, like, where's the yeah. hope? <laughs> So for someone just in general who's been in a longer relationship, especially in Hollywood too, what do you think the reasoning for that is? What do you think makes your relationship work and keeps it strong and loving and just rocking? Well, first of all, I got to give a huge shout out to my boo. I love mm. you, baby. Uh, <laughs> now that we've brought him up. Nicest guy. Uh, yes. Yeah. Very sweet. He's awesome. I think, you know, everything in my life that I do, I, I do it different. I like to do, because I'm different. I'm unique everybody does everything their way you know marlon and i have the coolest most loving amazing relationship and i think that's why it's worked so well i love that i can communicate with him in two languages and that it's really easy the way both of our traditions and upbringings kind of work well with each other we're both from different countries which is also really cool because I get to learn new things, but still, it's very similar. Yeah. The level of respect that we have for each other is really, really, really high. And I think that is really important. He is my biggest fan, and I'm his biggest fan. And I think having somebody that is always willing to push you up, and on a day that you're crabby, yeah. on a day that you may not want to deal with it is is saying like hey 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 you're a little crabby but i love you and i want you to not be crabby that's awesome you know what i'm saying uh, that yeah. is like and not only that that's just a small thing you know yeah. but but having a support system that is i've never met anybody more positive than marlon aquino Instagram at Aquino Marlin. Just saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Check it out. Yeah. But it's true though. I at first when I met him, I met him through a friend, through a mutual friend. We we met like at a bowling alley one time as a group of friends hanging out. And I was like, oh my god, he's kind of like too positive. It's a little annoying. Like <laughs> He's got, like, happiness shooting out of his ears, you know, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It just seemed... And it's not that it even seemed fake. It just seemed like he came out of, like, Sesame Street or something. Like, yeah. he was just, like, really positive and, like, extra positive. And I... It's not that I wasn't. It's just that I was dealing with a lot in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I was depressed. Mm-hmm. I was sad. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know it. Hmm. And pushing him away made me realize that made me understand that and from the minute that I I understand that I started learning from him the most amazing things and it was happiness and and yeah and it was really great and it's been really great and um and I love him to death and we have days (laughs) where we can't stand each other (laughs) and he's annoying as hell just last night we went to go see Deadpool and he wanted me to just sit 
in a restaurant while he was eating and I didn't want to eat. He wanted me to give, you know, keep him company. I wanted to go to Urban Outfitters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so at that moment I was being quite annoying and said, well, can you just let me go to Urban Outfitters and do what I want? And he let me. And, and, and then I went back early and I still sat there and, and, and you know, it was his company and it's kind of like that compromise and everybody, it, each relationship is different and they all compromise in each ways and they, and they all, you know, work in, in, the, in the best way that they can. So I, I think it's just learning from each other and learning from our differences and sure. pushing each other is important for me. You know, yeah. he always wants me to be the best version of me. Oh my gosh, you just hit the nail on the head. That's that's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. When you have that partner, you can actually work together, push each other, mutual respect, number one fans. I mean, anything we've done or gone through, it's always pushing the other person. Like, you got this. Yeah. Like, even when we were in our accident, I'll never forget. Yeah. Doctors are like, you'll walk in eight months. And he's like, no, 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 baby, you're doing this before. You've got this. Like, three months before, every single day, he was putting positive stuff in my mind. And it gets me so emotional thinking yeah. about it. Because of him, every day I, I start believing it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's the it roots. Well. It's the foundation. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And if you have a strong one, it's, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be great and you're mm-hmm. going to be amazing and it's going to be full of love and kindness. And it's, it's not going to, it might not be easy. You sure. know, there's going to be hard days sure. like, you know, everybody has. And, and hopefully um, those days will be better because of that other person, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've just <laughs> gained so much value. I've Aww. had so much fun. Um, but I have a, one last thing we like yeah. to wrap up with. We usually will do a life tip. Okay. And that could be anything from wellness to life. And I know you've given so many great <laughs> little golden nuggets to us. But okay. what's one life tip that you'd like to leave the listeners with today that they could apply? I think, I think one of the most in, in, important things that I've learned in my life is to really make time for important people in your life. Um, you, life is so crazy mm-hmm. and weird and amazing and it can change in an instant and so I think it's great to be a go-getter and it's great to work for what you want and be able to put yourself in a position to then enjoy Mm -hmm. the time with the people that you want to enjoy with. But don't forget that while you're doing that to do that at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Because it could take a while maybe to get to where you want to get to, you know? And uh, a lot of people lose relationships, friendships, um, just everything because they are involved in maybe their jobs too much this doesn't necessarily apply to my life too much but i just something that i have learned in my life it applies to me in a different way i lost my dad but it's just you know keep people that are important to you and even those that aren't you know just be open to making sure you make time for them always keep that as a priority because because that's all we really have in this life is just time and 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 and, and money and goes yep. yeah money goes if you have it one day yeah. and you don't the next so it's it's really important to to give your time to and your love and your kindness to the people that you care about oh i love that tip honestly yeah. one of my favorites it's so important yeah. people that's the, the relationships the bonds the love it's the most important thing and like you said you know you don't always know if people will always be there so yeah. love them guys listen to camila she knows what's good it's true yeah. it's true we want to thank you again. Yes. Um, it's always yeah, crazy. Amazing. Like, if you had to guess, like, yeah. we're, well, I'll just tell you, we're, we only talked for an hour. Okay. And then it's like, fly by. Yeah. It's so crazy. It flies by. It's so um, crazy. I know. But, um, but I appreciate you uh, making the drive to uh, Pasadena and Thanks. spending some time. I'm actually going to be and... staying around here for a little while. Oh, cool. I'm going to watch Stewart's play. Oh, we're going to too. Oh, <laughs> guys. Done, 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 you guys, are you going to dinner too? I we, um, might, we, we might. might yeah. okay. I'll see you guys. No. <laughs> We're well, that's cool. Then we'll see you. Uh, then we'll see you tonight. We'll yeah. Later. Marlon will be there. Nice. Done and done. Yeah. Well, perfect. Well, that worked out really well then. <laughs> Thank I'm you guys so much for having me. Yeah. Yes, of course. Awesome. Right, we'll see you guys. We'll next see you time. all later. See ya. That was awesome. You are amazing. Oh,